Hello magpies, and welcome back to the Social Justice Player's Handbook. Feeling swoopy? Let's roll up some characters. First class out of the gate is the OG we know so well, the Social Justice Warrior. Fighting on the front line, she is the first and last thing her enemies see. No sooner have their initiative dice hit the table. Indeed, it's hard to focus on anything else when she swings her old-school lesbian pride flag battle axe at your head. Her defining character trait is the unwavering defense of her squishier party members, and of anyone for that matter, who can't take being hated as well as she does, which is pretty much everyone. She loathes a bully and is at her best when launching uppercuts at some shitlord trying to punch down. Catch her shrugging off a blow that would topple most folk, and throwing herself into harm's way just to tie up some foolhardy attacker who would otherwise be going after a less stalwart defender. Win or lose, you need to have a thick skin in her line of work. She loves an audience and is performative in the best sense of the term. Schadenfreude is amplified when we see bad things happen to bad people, and nothing makes a warrior happier than inspiring those who cannot stand up for themselves through judicious application of her vulgar displays of power, even if it is just to live vicariously, knowing that she has our back. Finally among her strengths is that she can adapt to any combat, no matter how un underhanded the strategy. You won't find her quoting Michelle Obama. When they go low, she goes for the solar plexus. Coming out smelling like roses was never her cup of tea after all. A Norman Lindsay rhyme might be more her style, quoth she, I take no shame to fight the lame if they deserve to cop it. So do not try to pipe your eye, or with my flip I'll flop it. At the end of the day, dirty, tactics, dirty tactics are just one more muscle to work out in her impressive body of work. But even an unstoppable force has weaknesses. Cracking skulls doesn't make friends of your enemies. And once her enemies regroup and lick their wounds, you better believe they will come back. And really in greater numbers too. Violence begets violence, and to live by the sword means to die by the sword. Bring it on, she might say, but if she ends up making more enemies than she can presently dominate, she won't be able to protect everyone. Which leads to her second weakness. By being the biggest, loudest, and most memorable force on the battlefield, you may find your whole party painted by her broad brush. Don't be surprised if people start to ref start referring to your whole group as violent thugs, even if she is the only one doing the violence and the thuggery. If you want to do diplomacy, best to make sure she agrees to hang back for a hot minute. But at least if shit does go down, rest assured she will be ready. Which brings us to her critical weakness, and every hero class has one of these. This is her Achilles heel, the thing that can turn her from a hero into a villain. For, for, for the warrior, it is downstream from living in the moment and exulting in the thrill of battle. For when the dust has cleared, the outcome and how it aids the larger war effort is really the only thing that matters. Were innocent bystanders defended or did they become collateral damage in the conflict? Was the violence justified and the cause just? For if she slips up one too many times or becomes complacent, prioritizing victory and the appearance of strength above the righteousness of her fury, she risks falling to become her dark counterpart, the social justice barbarian. See, the Barbarian is just a warrior who has come to enjoy the rush of battle above the satisfaction of defending the weak, and will lash out at friends and foes alike, indeed at 
anyone who challenges her dominance. The reasons for the barbarian's downfall are myriad. Perhaps she chose the wrong hill to die on, and pride won't let her abandon a bad position. Was she worn down by a thankless job and found better recompense from a villain's pay purse? Or was she misled down a rabbit hole of infamy by those close to her, and still believing herself to be on the side of good? She sees herself as merely defending her friends from those pesky heroes in their way. It's hard to say in every case, just know that when the red mist descends, you do not want to stand in her path. A warrior's critical weakness forms a barbarian's primary trait. She abandons the ethics of defending the weak for all she cares about is the end result and the outcome she can get for herself and her own. Forget about the poor villagers cowering in, their fi cowering in fear it's their fault for not being strong enough to stop her, so she might well tell herself. Her other traits, both her strengths and weaknesses, remain roughly the same, albeit retextured to remove those pesky ethics that hold back her potential to be the strongest anime protagonist in the cruel world she embraces. The vulgar displays of power become for her own glorification, and her bad reputation she holds up as a badge of honour. Violence itself is amoral, and its application and outcome are the sole determinants as to whether it is a good or evil act. The skills that defend innocence can be turned to defend villains, and those that inspire courage can strike fear, and punching up or down can just be a matter of target priority. The Barbarian's critical weakness is, her is the key to her salvation, and it is the path back towards fighting for a better world among heroes. For her, it is that her battle rage requires her to dissociate from viewing her victims as living, feeling people who, but for a twist of fate, could have been her friends. Sometimes the expansion of her social in-group is a way to cause her to humanize the objects of her hatred, or perhaps she needs a moment of realization where a friend falls to her own hand, reminding her that her actions do have consequences. Maybe in some cases she needs just a little gentle push from a trusted companion before she is willing to overcome the oxymoron inherent in fighting for peace. Or perhaps she is susceptible to the mutual respect of a fellow warrior, who in turn endures her rage without flinching. And this will forge that peculiar bond that only combat can create. Regardless, to win over a barbarian requires patience, a change environment and a thick skin, for she will lash out, even if, even if it is just to test your reactions. Above all else, do not patronize her, but remember that, at the end of the day, rage is a perfectly valid response to injustice, but letting it control you is a very bad idea. Thank you Magpies, this is the first class and its counterpart. We will be doing 14 classes in total, so I hope you will join me next time as we continue the Social Justice Player's Handbook.